Hello, Jess Too Good here, and the fall season is just around the corner, so it's time to count down the 10 LEGO sets I want the most that release officially in the fall season. Well, I will consider from September 1st to November 1st. These themes have qualifying sets. Without further ado, let's get into this. Finally, another huge at at. The last huge at at was in 2014, so this is a good time to release this one. Well, this is a Malibu Stacy with a new hat, based off the last Jedi First Order Heavy Assault Walker. I like the Star Wars sequel trilogy so far, so I feel I will need to get this one eventually. It's also the only set to get the new Rey, who has a new hairpiece, though I'm sure she'll come in a smaller set eventually. The exclusive Walker, Driver, and Poe look neat as well. I mean, the worst part about the set is the $150 price. The last one was a deserving $110, but this one is the same size, but 40 extra bucks. I don't know, that's pretty bad and will definitely delay my purchases of this set. This will be the first of many of this Last Dimensions wave on the list. It's the LEGO Dimensions Teen Titans Go Starfire Fun Pack. I don't care about the show, but look, this Starfire minifigure is interesting. I missed out on the one from Jokerland and this one has a different, newly colored hairpiece. The outfit looks good too and the face is just too adorable. It's just that simple. Nothing more, nothing less, but it's cheap so I know I'll get it right away. The LEGO Star Wars The Last Jedi Finalizer earns the next spot on my list, or First Order Star Destroyer. I can't believe this one is 160 bucks. That's the worst part though. It's about the same size as the last ISD from 2014, even down to about a 50 piece count difference between the two. And it's just as cramped as the last. But look, I'm being pretty hard about it. I do like that it at least has standing space inside, and the outside's build is very interesting with different levels and crevices. Of course, the reason a lot of people will want it is the Snoke minifigure. He looks different than we expected with that shiny gold coat. Pretty freaky for a LEGO minifigure. I'm sure he'll come in a smaller set, but still, this one looks good in my sequel trilogy display. Say what you want about the quality of the Teen Titans Go TV show, but the LEGO Dimensions Teen Titans Go Team Pack is the only way to get Raven and the cheapest way to get Beast Boy. This will make the set a bestseller added on the popularity of this show. Though, both minifigures have the Teen Titans Go style to them. I don't mind that since I like cartoony looking minifigures most of the time. Beast Boy's exclusive new hairpiece is especially useful and I'm hoping Raven's alternate face is the one shown on the box's art, where she has glowing red eyes. This would make a useful face for those who don't like the cartoony Teen Titans Go eyes. I never thought we would see Beetlejuice in Lego form. I mean, that's what Lego Dimensions sort of does. There's so many properties in this theme that I never expected to come to Lego. The Beetlejuice minifigure looks fantastic in my opinion. I love the use of the doc brown hair in spring green, and the stripes and dirt all over his outfits look pretty cool. The sandworm is fine, but I mean, there's not much of a use for it for me because of the fact I can't really play the game since it never works on my Wii U. Oh well. The return of the original LEGO Winter Village buildings has come, and this one is pretty good. It's more low-key than some of the other Winter Village buildings, which makes sense because the main centerpiece for this area would be the train to accompany it. And it's generous that we're getting some tracks in this $80 set. I just wish the building was bigger. The coffee shop window and train ticket window is neat, but there's barely any room to move around inside. The exterior colors look great though, and I love the melting ice near the border of the platform. The bus is a letdown, however. I like LEGO buses, but this one is too small and the colors are way off. All together though, as somebody who has all of the Winter Village builds, this will be a nice addition to my Winter Village display. Well, my display that is now taken apart in boxes, that still needs the Winter Village train built. Oh my, I have a lot of setting up to do. The Powerpuff Girls Fun Pack just has Buttercup in it. I really liked the Powerpuff Girls show when I was younger, but I want this one less than the others since she has the two spikes at the back of her hair, which remind me of the new series that I can't stand. But hey, that's such a little thing. They still captured Buttercup pretty excellently. Much like the other Fun Pack, since the game is dead to me, I'm really getting this for the minifigure alone. The build is much like Starfire's, I mean it's another mini mech. I guess they didn't have much vehicles to choose from for both. The LEGO Dimensions Powerpuff Girls Team Pack is my most wanted LEGO Dimensions set for the final wave. Blossom and Bubbles nail their classic looks here. 
It looked just too adorable, as the saying goes, with a cartoony molded head and printing. And this is a set that I would get just for the minifigures. The other two builds have some interesting printed pieces, at least. I mean, it really is a shame that the LEGO Dimensions game is buggy as heck, so I can't even enjoy these in-game. None of the 2017 LEGO Ideas sets interested me until the old fishing store was revealed. This pseudo-modular has an amazing rustic exterior and fittingly cramped interior that reminds me a lot of the beachside knick-knack shops here in Florida. That's what I relate it to, being a Floridian. I'm glad the set is only $150, fueling more to that modular feel. The use of olive green tiles on the outside look great, with some crooked to add to the rusticness. There also seems to be some nice prints, but I'm a bit let down that there's a plethora of stickers. I mean, I'm not a stickler for stickers for sets in the 6 to 12 or 7 to 14 range, but a 12 plus set like this really should have prints. The minifigures are fantastic as well. Thankfully, some have new prints, and we even get two new plain dual molded legs. I love that. Either way, the old fishing store is a gorgeous tribute to beach bums and fishing fanatics alike, and will probably go down as one of the best LEGO Idea sets to date. I can't wait to get my hands on it. And my most wanted LEGO set of full 2017 is the LEGO Ninjago City set. Alright, this one already came out with an early VIP release, and I've been resisting it just to keep this list stable. Fudge. I mean, it does have an official release of September 1st, so it's definitely a full 2017 set. But now I might have to wait till after Force Friday to buy it. Heck, if I get it after the 21st, I can get this sick exclusive Lloyd and even a Ninjago City poster. Crap, I got a plan. Anyways, uh, Ninjago City. Do I need to say much about it? I've been praising it for months. This thing is incredible. It's busy, it's a clash of different designs, basically it's the perfect city in one pseudo-modular. From the comic shop, to the beautiful waterway at the bottom, the outfit boutique, the fancy restaurant, Lloyd's cute little house. Gosh, I love this set. I'm a sucker for little easter eggs as well, and this is littered with them. It also has incredible minifigure pieces, like the dude's Galador shirt and Misako's cute exclusive face print. I really don't have much else to say besides the fact that it's worth the $300 it costs. Anyways, what are your guys' choices? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.